Hey guys, it's Ernesto and welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So today we have a very special show. This is not the Monday critique like we normally have every Monday. Uh, this Monday, we're going to be talking all about business. In fact, actually, this entire month, we're going to be talking about uh, business with respect to the live broadcast. Um, and just a bit of a programming note. Next Monday, um, I will not be here. I will be um, in New York. So unfortunately, we won't have a live um, broadcast on Monday. But we will have one the following Monday, which I believe would be the 18th, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to have a, a special guest as well, uh, Photo Me Ike. He's going to be on. And he's going to be talking all about his business as well, like how he transitioned from his nine to five and to full time. The purpose of this basically, guys, is to help you or give you inspiration. If this is your desire, I mean, moving to nine to five is not everyone's desire, but I mean, moving from your nine to five to like a full time is not really everyone's desire. Uh, but if it is your desire and, you know, you have some kind of a, a roadblock or anything like that that's stopping you from moving forward, my hope is that, you know, th this particular conversations will help to push you to the next level. OK, uh, and our special guest is going to talk all about that. So um, before I begin, I'm going to just point you guys really quickly to the Facebook group. So in the event that you are here for the Monday critique, I just want to point you to the Facebook group where you can actually submit your images and stuff like that if you wanted to uh, have your images critique. Uh, we're going to start critiquing those images again, um, the new year in January. Um, but for now, let me just show you guys where you can critique. We're going to then get to our guests and then we're going to start, start talking all about transitioning from your nine to five to full time. OK, so let me just transfer to here, transition here to my desktop and we can go from there. OK, so. Guys, if you wanted to submit your images for the Monday Critique, there's a group specifically um, in, on Facebook called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. Now, that group is not specific for critiquing. It's specific for, you know, you could share your images and get feedback from other members in the group or just share your images if that's what you want to do. Uh, but if you want to specifically submit an image for, photo critique, for the Monday um, Critique, there's a specific pin post at the very top of that group. Um, this is the pin post right here. Um, and you could submit your images right in the comment section um, in that area. So if I go to the comment section here, you could submit your images right here. And when you submit your images, we critique it. Or yeah, well, we, because I do add on guests now. So I guess myself and I guess potentially would critique. Uh, your images and we critique it in chronological order. So like I said, if you're just joining us, um, we're not going to be doing a critique tonight, but we are going to be talking about business tonight. Um, so once again, my name is uh, Ernesto. I'm a portrait photographer out, based out in North Carolina. Uh, so if this is the first time you join our show, welcome. So I'm going to transition now and talk a little bit about John. John, um, I, I forgot when I got in touch with John has probably been maybe a year ago and John could probably correct me if I'm <laughs> wrong about that, but it's probably, it's been a while. Um, and I think I connected to him on actually this group, the fine art photography and modeling, modeling group. I think he posted like a composite in that group. And that's when I got <laughs> notice about, um, John's work. Uh, but the reason for this particular show, this particular show inspired me um it, it one of the videos that i saw that john put out it was a live video that he put out and it was so inspirational he was talking about you know how you know working full time you know is is for him you know was was really really great uh but is not an easy thing you know doing a full time uh, doing photography full time is is really not an easy thing. But he, you know, the way he presented it, and he's going to talk about this. Uh, the way he presented it, it fired me up, and and it inspired me to basically do this series for uh, December. Um, I would show the video to you guys here on Facebook, 
but you know it has some music in there and youtube might pull it but i'll put the link to it um, after the show i'll put the link to that video uh in the in the description or in the comments so that you guys could go check it out for yourself so without further ado i'm going to introduce here or i'm going to have john introduce himself here so this is john uh he is based out of Philadelphia, unless I got that wrong. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, yeah, absolutely. So he's a photographer, he does video. And what else don't you do, man? You do a whole bunch of stuff. What else don't you do? <laughs> Music, um, a little bit of everything, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, John, I mean, John, so how, how long have you been doing photography? Um. My 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 story of photography is a little weird as far as um how I got into it and all that kind of stuff. So I would say as I guess you could say being taking photography as a, a profession and um you know being a professional in photography and doing it, I guess I would say probably maybe six years. So, but uh, I've been doing uh, a combination of cinematography graphic design work, retouching, and so forth for over 20 years. So wow. it's kind of a wow. really weird roundabout thing with me. <laughs> wow. So I guess before we dive straight into your background and all that stuff, give us, you know, a quick elevator pitch of what your business is about today. Like, you know, what do you guys do today? Okay. So um, our company's called Our Theory Productions. Um, and Our Theory uh, is basically a combination. We're a full production house, basically. A boutique, I should say, production house. There's much bigger production <laughs> houses than us, but uh, we're, we're, we're pretty good in size and what we do here. So basically, um, we handle all forms of production, marketing, and advertisement. So that's everything from audio recording, audio mixing and mastering, music production, um, photography, video, podcasting, um, any type of media type of um, work. It just all depends. Uh, we do marketing and advertisement. Um, shout out to one of my business partners. Uh, his name's Kevin Sutton, Big Apple, as everybody calls him. <laughs> and uh, Kevin does a combination of marketing, publicist work, and so forth, um, and so on. And uh, through that, we work with a slew of a little bit of everything from major companies uh, like uh, French Toast, Ed Hardy, Affliction, um, Def Jam, RCA Records, Concord Entertainment to uh you know uh, small local clients whether it be independent artists music artists independent artists themselves creatives photographers it, it's a little bit of everything so we we kind of cover the gambit of different people that we work with and the things that we do it just kind of all depends what kind of falls on our doorstep based on uh you know network and people we know and advertisement and, you know all the usual stuff so wow that's a that's a long laundry list of stuff, man. That's uh, that's uh, that's pretty pretty good. Um, I guess one of the questions I have for you, I guess before I jump into my questions that I have for John, guys, if you have any questions that you may have about you know this this specific topic about transitioning from nine to five to a full time, you know, drop those questions in the comments because obviously. I don't know all the questions to ask. So if you have questions, specific questions, drop those in and we're going to get to it. Uh, but I guess my question here, John, is, um, you know, what got you interested in photography specifically? Oh, man. <laughs> Once again, a, a real roundabout question for me. Um, I don't know. My, my history and all of this in entertainment and what led to different things in, in creative arts has, has just been a really wild, interesting story. Man, I've been very, very fortunate and very lucky and sometimes very unlucky. <laughs> and some of the, the situations that have led to, to my, my career and all the things that I've done in this. Um, photography kind of came around in a weird way. I, uh, I've been doing cinematography for years. Uh, I went to Temple University for cinematography. Uh, I started off actually in movies doing stunts. That's how I got all into this. I was doing stunts when I was about 17 years old. And uh, my mentor in, uh, in that field, in a sense, was uh, his name is uh, Robert Samuels, Bobby Samuels, as everybody calls him. Shout out. 
Uh, he's uh, one of the most renowned black stuntmen in the world. And uh, it was weird. We, we met in a real roundabout way, and I met his family and so forth and found out he was from Philadelphia, and I was this kid that was part of the international Taekwondo team and all this weird stuff. And uh, it led to me finding out about him and wanting to be in movies and banging on his door every day. And I'm not leaving till you work with me. <laughs> and um, that led to me doing stunts. And so I did my first uh, professional gig when I was about 17. It was a, a B-Boy document with most death. And uh, that was back during the Ruckus Records era. So that was a long time ago. And um yeah, after that, I, I was hooked. I was like, yep, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. And um, in the midst of that, I was also doing art. And uh, same thing, man. I've just been very fortunate over the years to where just people have met me, especially as a kid. And I guess just saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and, and just looked out for me, man. And I'm, I've been so blessed for that over the years. And uh, that led to uh, Martin King. And Martin King uh, is kind of a, a weird Philly local legend. Um, he was uh, one of the owners of Atomic Comics, which is a real famous comic book store on South Street in Philadelphia. And Mr. King used to draw for DC Comics. And back then when I was a kid, it was all about comic books and stuff and drawing them all day and so forth. So um, they used to have contests and stuff at the comic book store. And um, I ended up winning one of the contests. And me and a friend uh, would just go down to the comic books like every day. And just hang out <laughs> and cut school and all kinds of stuff. And Mr. King kind of just saw us and, and I saw these hungry kids, I guess. Um, there's a bunch of kids. It wasn't just, it was a lot of us. And he just, he was just like a big brother, man. He took us under our wing and taught us all how to draw professionally and get into the business of drawing comic books. So that was kind of my introduction into Photoshop and Illustrator. And this is, be this is before it was even called Photoshop, when it was like, it was Adobe, Adobe Creative Paint or something like that. It was called back then before I switched to Photoshop. And um, that's how we kind of got all into this. And so I had an apprenticeship with, with a small apprenticeship with DC Comics for a short period of time. And I quickly learned that I didn't want to do comic books. I didn't want to draw for the rest, sit in front of a table in a dark room and draw for the rest of my life. And, um, and then shortly after that is when I met Rob and that and that led to movies and then i figured out in a roundabout way that i wanted to be a director so that that's kind of the, <laughs> the weird roundabout story of how i ended up getting into all of this it's, and so um, from that went to school went back to school um studied cinematography temple university shout out to temple alumni and um that was it man i've been doing it ever since and uh, in a weird way kind of got involved in some music things too and uh, a part of audio engineering, you learn in, in film and all that. And so that just kind of, I just kind of dove into the entertainment biz, man. And um, I picked up more mentors as I went along. Uh, one of the mentors, one of my, you know, previous mentors, who's now my business partner, uh, James Bailey, JB, as everybody calls him, who was my manager back in the day. And, uh, you know, all that led to where we're at now. And we decided to, to put our resources together and, and open this studio. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. So the studio's been here for about three years. And uh, this is uh, our second year as us kind of taking over it. Uh, we bought it from the previous owner. And uh, we've been running it ever since. So That's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Would you... Would you recommend um, creatives, um, like you mentioned, you did go back to school for a little bit. Uh, do you recommend uh, other creatives out there to go to school for either photography or videography? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I would say yes, yes, overall. Um, biggest reason, I, I mean, I'll be real, the biggest thing you get out of school more than anything is your network. And your network is your net worth. That's everything. True. And, um, most people in the industry and how they started, you know, that, that led to where, wherever they are. Um, nine times out of came that nine times out of ten that came from your network and a chunk of that network came from school, whether it be friends and alumni that you end up, you know, growing up with and graduating with and still become friends that, you know, are in the business wherever and pull you a line kind of deal. Um, even fraternities I've seen on that note. Or um, you know, that that school whatever led to whatever internship led to whatever you know that led to where you need to be um that was kind of my story like uh, from school 
uh, it led to me meeting um, other mentors of mine like Kevin Niles, uh, uh, Devin Hampton, and other people like that that uh, ended up becoming mentors over the years. And um, I ended up working with on different projects, and they were kind of up and coming cinematographers at the time. And, um, you know, that led to me having the career that I had. So, and yeah, so, you know, I definitely say school's a great thing. Um, it's not the end all be all, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people wouldn't end up in a college and university and so forth. Um, I would say that's okay. It's just, it is hard. It is a little harder <laughs> depending on what you're doing. Um, but not impossible, not by any means. That's, that's kind of one of the, the great things about the create one of the great and the bads of, of being in the creative business. Um, the good is, you know, uh, schooling and these different things can help and, and you don't necessarily even have to have those things if you're talented enough, you're hungry enough, you're driven enough. Um, the downside is, is that there of the creative business is that there is no, there's no set in stone way to make it, you know, it's not like you go to school and you're a nurse or you're a doctor or you're a teacher, you know, and if you just do the steps, you'll become, you know, whatever professional you need to become in it. It doesn't work like that in creative, you know, it's, it's, everybody's got a different story and how they made it. Everybody's got a different, you know, you know, same cake, different baker kind of deal on how everybody has made it. So, you know, that's, that's the only downside. <laughs> yeah. Well, network it is your net worth. I think that's a, a pretty good, uh, quote right there. I like that. Uh, so what were you doing like before, um, were you actually doing like a nine to five or considered, you know, based on your background, it seems like you were doing a lot of stuff, but I guess, you know, in quote unquote nine to five, were you actually doing something like that prior to starting uh, your business today? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I worked tons of nine to fives. Um, from college, it was all retail when I was younger. Um, and then that led into, uh, uh, once I got out of school, um, I did recruiting for a while, um, which was interesting because because recruiting led to teaching and um, I, it led to instructional work. And um, teaching is what led to later um, down the road of me actually teaching what I do, excuse me, in cinematography and even in um, composite work and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I've been very fortunate, same thing, to, to be able to, to teach in those fields. So, you know, there's been times work's been slow when I was freelancing and things of that nature. And uh, my, my goal back to was always teaching and uh, things like that. And I just felt the real passion for it that I never thought I would ever in a million years have. You know, it's just one of those interesting things where life takes you. So um, off and on, I've done teaching for years. So uh, there was a kind of a dry spell uh, in my career where I had a major illness. Uh, this happened back in 2011. Uh, it was a rare illness called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And um, I literally was paralyzed for about two years. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was, it was it was crazy, man. I was, I was in a coma for four months. I was paralyzed for about a year and a half, almost two years. And, uh, and then even that, just the recovery of getting back to being normal again, and, and, you know, being able to run, jump and all that kind of stuff uh, took a long time. So in that time period, I had to really almost kind of start over. And it, and it opened and changed a lot of things for me in my life. Uh, before then, I was just kind of working freelance. I was just jumping around different film sets, jumping around different stuff, and then in between, working in between jobs and just kind of surviving and, and doing my craft as much as I could. Um, once all that happened, uh, it just kind of hit the reset button for me. It forced me to slow down, which kind of ended up being a blessing in disguise. And a couple of things happened. Um, one, I got back more into teaching, um, and two, uh, it made me realize when I, when I tried to get back into the business and, and, you know, jump back into things, so to speak, I found that I couldn't. And one reason I couldn't was because a lot of the work that I did was for third party companies. And so working for third party companies, I was kind of a third party of a third party. So I didn't own rights to pretty much anything that I did. And I found that like, I couldn't even post stuff online and like all kinds of stuff. And it hurt my career. Sounds like, sound I, like I, those rapper, rapper deals. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for cameramen, I guess it's a way to look at it. Um, and yeah, it just, it got to the thing where it made me realize like, dude, I need to do my own thing. I need to own my own stuff and I need to do my own properties and you know, all those kinds of things. So that's just kind of a roundabout way what led to the studio and, and everything that I'm doing now. So, 
Uh, so what what kind of um, I get actually before I, before I uh, ask that next question, um, guys, I, I noticed um, behind the focus put in a question um, or I think is a question or a comment. I didn't read it fully, but um, if you guys have any questions or comments um, for John, drop those comments in below. Basically, what I'm trying to do is just get, um, get some a little bit of background from John, and then we're gonna jump in. I guess we could start jumping in now into like, um, so, you know, what was the most difficult thing that for you, John, um, in in starting your full time business, like transitioning out of, um, you know, the various nine to fives that you had. Like, what was the most difficult thing um, for you starting that that business? Um, combination of things, I think, as it is for everybody. Um, the first being uh, fear, honestly, fear more than anything. I think that's what stops everybody, honestly, more than anything, for from starting their own business, no matter what the kind of business it is, and and, and trying to to make it for themselves and whatever they're trying to do. Like fear is a, is a, is a funny, funny thing, man. Um, so yeah, so a lot of fear between, you know, can I do it on my own? Um, how, you know, how am I going to get to the next job? Cause the thing with being, especially a creative, most creative jobs, not all, but a lot of them, um, you know, it's, it's kind of gig after gig after gig. So, you know, you're only employed into your next gig, you know, and once that, that job is over, that project is over, whatever you're doing, you're, <laughs> you know, you're unemployed again. You know, it's the same for actors. It's the same for music artists. It's the same for uh, cameramen. It's the same for a lot of people. So in this business, photographers alike. So, you know, um, so I think that's one of the biggest ones is fear. How do you deal with your fear? How do um, you overcome that and so forth? And a lot of it, honestly, is just, believe it or not, I mean, it, it's funny. You'll hear this a lot, too, from like a, uh, you know, motivational speakers and stuff like a, like a Tim Ferriss or a, a um, uh, gosh, I can't think of his name right now. But um, basically, uh, society makes you believe in so many ways. One, one thing's dealing with school sometimes, you know, you get programmed automatic almost to believe that, you know, a corporation has to support you. You know what I mean? That you, you got to work a nine to five and work for some company and somebody else is going to take care of your finances, your security, your, your medical and all these kinds of things. And that's true to a very, to an extent, and, you know, and we all learn this as we go on that, you know, especially these days, there's no such thing as job security anymore. It doesn't exist. It really doesn't like retirement is getting higher and higher. Social security is ridiculous now. Um, you, pensions are almost non-existent in most jobs. You know, there's very few jobs these days that have pensions yep. and all those kinds yep. of things. So there's, there's really no security, you know, but we still get, you know, fed into this fairy tale that, you know, that you're still going to have these things and they're disappearing more and more and more and more, you know, and as our population gets bigger and economics and everything changes and, you know, it's changing more and more, you know, that it's, it's hard, man. It's, it's really hard. And, what I've just learned from myself is that, you know, really <laughs> early on, there is no job security. And the more you you come to reality with that and realize the only job security that's going to come is what you build for yourself and what you build for your career, what you build for um, your business. You know, it doesn't have to be a business necessarily, but how you really build your career, you know, yeah. um, is really what you stand on. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause jobs come and go and, you know, you can get fired for anything, you know, I mean, it, you know, there's no job security anymore. What makes the security is how well you've developed your career, your skills, what, how you've mastered what you do, your reputation, the positions you built for yourself, the network you built for yourself. Those are the things that hold you up when you lose a job, it's easy to get another one and, and all those kinds of things. So, I mean, that's that's really once you kind of learn that they're one in the same, whether you're working for a company or you're doing it on your own and you just learn to to just to motivate yourself and move on your own. I can't say it's easy, but, you know, it, it becomes a little better to digest, I guess. And then the rest is you just got to hustle, man. 
absolutely agree. Uh, I just want to just tap into that that fear that you were talking about. So, because a lot of people, I'm sure, have a, you know a, a significant amount of fear of transitioning from you know what they feel is a secure environment from you know their nine to five to you know something that may be a little bit risky. So. With that being said, like for you, when you made that 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 transition, like did you have like a um, you know like a customer base that you could rely on, or do you had just had to basically say, you know what, I want to do this. I have zero customers now, and I'm just gonna go and just get my customers and or clients, and you know make this a reality. Like, how did you make that make that decision? Um. Well, I, I guess I'll speak more for now in, in starting the, the business. Because this is the first time I've ever had an overhead, which is very different than before. Before it was just me, even when I was freelance, I could run around and do whatever I need to do. I got to sleep on a person's couch, I get to do it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I don't suggest. But um, it's very different now as far as like I'm running a business and there's an overhead and there's people that work for me and you know I'm responsible for different things. And um, it, it's it's very different, very scarier than than ever before. And you do it for this. And for this, I, I would say for me anyway, I can't speak for anybody else. My my situation is a combination of uh, regular customers and clients slash um, having to go out and still get and find. And I mean, the going out and getting and finding never stops. I don't care how secure of a contract or or customer or whatever that you got. Um, every deal dries up after a while. So it, it's always a hustle of finding new contacts, um, new business opportunities, um, new people to work with and so forth. And, um, you know, it, it's it's never easy. Uh, you know, I mean, there's the, <laughs> I guess to give millions and millions of tips and tricks, but when it, when it boils down to, honestly, like what, what saved my butt and has helped me tremendously is one, um, having a very sales mentality, uh, I think, that's crucial for every um, creative and is not easy for every creative. Most create a lot of creatives tend to be introverts, um, which can make it very hard to, to, to open yourself up and put yourself out there to meet people and all those kinds of things. I would say a good, you know, 70 percent of most creatives I meet are introverts. Um, so me the, included, you know, just an FYI. <laughs> So overcoming that hurdle, man, is, is tough. I, I'm I'm naturally an introvert too. I just trained myself like crazy to get past that. Um. So yeah, I mean that's one. Uh, the other, I would say, uh, once again, your network, man. Like I've just been very fortunate and, and very very lucky, man. To one, have great people to work with, and that work with me, believe in me, trust me, and, and work hard with me. Um, the other, I've just been very, it's been a weird thing, man. I can definitely say this. I had that, that most people I've met who are other creatives haven't had all their lives all my life from about as far as I can remember being a kid, I have always been around people who have been talented in, in, in the arts. And it's weird too, because my parents weren't, my parents weren't artists by any means or anything like that. My dad had some dealings in music a long time ago, but I didn't find out about that stuff till I was older. Um, so I, I've just, this is weird. I've just always wanted to meet people and be a part of creative communities. And I, without even knowing it, I did it a lot of times when I was a kid and I just gained mentors and gained people that always wanted to work with me, allies, friends. And I would say majority of all my friends since I was a kid have been in some form of artist, creative, so forth. And not only that have gone on to have successful careers or some type of career at least in the business and um yeah i've just been very very fortunate in that so i haven't come across where i, I meet so many creators who, who never had that and they struggle with that and you know i don't know anybody i've never been around anyone who's been in the creative world or or does this for a living and you know, i don't know what to do so i, I haven't had that 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 uh problem which has been very fortunate but what i would tell people um trying to get over their fear, introvert, trying to, to network, trying to build all this stuff. Um, and, and you hear Chase Jarvis and a lot of people say this all the time. And it's so true, man. Just just be involved in the community. You just, just you got to stick your head out, man. Stick your head out and don't be afraid for it to get cut off. 
you know, we're like chameleons, man. And, you know, it'll grow back. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, I, I would say that was that would be like one of my um, my um, biggest fears is to meet meeting new people, uh, like meeting people on the internet, talking to people on this camera. You know, that's all well and good. But if I have to go in a social environment, like, you know, multiple people, it's very difficult for me to engage with those people that I may not necessarily know. Um, so I guess my question to you as a person who, you know, you also say that you're kind of an introvert as well. Um, I know you'd kind of say stick your head out. But like if I'm in a like if you're in a, in an envi- a social environment like that and you know how do you break the ice as an as an introvert like how do you start engaging with people and trying to pitch or not pitch but just have a conversation i guess with another person that you may not necessarily know you know um I, there's a couple things to it first i would say is just um practice honestly practice makes perfect man like like i know that sounds maybe a little weird but just you know i would tell most creatives and artists, because yeah, it really is, man. Most art, most artists are really introverted. I would say, you know, just start practicing talking to people, just just talking to random strangers. Even I know that sounds crazy, but just like start having mad conversations with people that you wouldn't normally have conversations with. Um, there's no easy way to go about it. You just got to do it. You know, just you just got to do the work. That goes for anything. And you know, practice. Just like you practice editing, you practice photography, you practice shooting, you practice your lighting, you practice. It's no different. Just keep practicing. If you keep practicing and, and opening up to people you wouldn't normally open to, it eventually you'll eventually get better at it. It's just that simple. Um, that's one. The other I would say would be um, surround, like go be a part of creative communities and creative things. Um, the conversations become a lot easier because you're talking about the subject matters and stuff that you already care about and you already love. If I'm in a room full of photographers and we're all talking about photography, a conversation flows a lot easier because we're all here talking about the same thing. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would find a thing. I think the hard part is, is not necessarily once you're there sticking yourself out. I think that naturally happens if you're in the right environments. I think the problem is going. Is actually going to those environments, <laughs> putting yourself out and doing that. You just, and as far as that goes, um, there's really no easy answer, man. Everybody's different. Everybody's got different fears. Um, the, the biggest thing I can say to that is one thing I see sometimes, not always, but, but sometimes, um, is some of it's conditioning, social conditioning that you got to learn is not true and not a reality, and you got to break, in a sense. For instance, I come from Philly. You know, I was, I was, for the most part, born and raised. You know, I live different places here and there sometimes, but for the most part, I'm a Philly native. And um, I, I'll never forget a friend of mine in film class. She she, she made a, a film that actually won an award, uh, and she went on to become a, a pretty known filmmaker uh, that was called um, To the Shore and Back. And it was about uh, South Philadelphia residents that have lived in South Philadelphia all their life and have never left. The furthest they've ever gone is to the Jersey Shore and back. And don't know anything else about any other areas or, or anything like that. And that's a lot of people, especially on the East Coast. A lot of people grow up in these really tight-knit neighborhoods. And um, it almost this kind of village mentality. And you almost never leave the village, yeah. in a sense. Yeah. And um, what I've learned is just that there's just a big, wide world out here. Man. And you, 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 we, I'll be so many people that want so much more in whatever they're trying to achieve. But, you know, they don't do it. And a lot of times, you know, looking at their background, their culture, their history, wherever they came from, you tend to see a lot of that as the conditioning to them believing that either sometimes they can't, that they're not supposed to have it or that, you know, reaching out that far for whatever reason is a bad thing. And at the end of the day, you just, just got to realize, man, one raw human, you'd be surprised. And no matter where you go, man, I, I've been... Almost, I guess you could say a little bit around the world. I've been all over the place, man. I've gotten to meet a lot of interesting people. I would not be the person I am today if I didn't meet all these different kinds of people. You know, we, we are all tribal based in a sense of, of how and where we come from. And just being a part of that, sticking yourself out, man. The people you'll meet, the journeys you'll have, the further out you go. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's everything. So, you know, you just got to push 
yourself. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta at some point say fuck it. <laughs> Borrow my French, and um, just go, man. And like, dude, like, like, put yourself out there. Start going to, to. I don't care if it's you know photography group shootouts or a convention that's in your neighborhood or whatever. Like, just go, just go experience. Go to different people's studios and try them out. I don't care if you got your own. Go do different. Like, I have a huge studio. Here. I still go to other people's studio. I was just at Gregory Max's studio the other day. I'm going to Duke Fam's studio probably next week. Like, you know, we, you've got to be a part of your community if you want to be a part of this stuff. It's, I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the one of the things you just said that resonated big time with me is just um, you just have to go, you know? Like, for me, it, it's like that's like the biggest barrier for me, like the anticipation of you know having to deal like that's one of the reasons that i don't want to go to like wppi like i never went to wppi i don't know what the experience might be like it might be great but in my head i'm like damn there's like all these people there i don't don't think i want to you know go but i think you you just hit it uh hit the nail on the head there you know just have to get up and and go and you probably you know i probably overcome those little hurdles and 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 you also said you know practice practice is something that i preach a lot about you know photography and i would never think that you know as far as practicing just going out there talking to strangers i guess talking to a stranger not having any type of you know um expectations you know um from that person per se just having a conversation just seeing it where it go practice having a conversation you know finding some kind of common ground i guess to start that conversation i think will be great so I think all those things that you said is, you know, valuable advice. Check with me in a year and see if I do it. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think you yeah, I, think, I think you're all right, man. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah, it's 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 uh, I just um it's no easy way and it, it is a fear, man. It's a fear we all got. We all have a fear of the unknown and stepping into uncomfortable situations and all of that stuff. But the funny part, especially when it comes to like like going to like conventions and and all those kind of WPPI, all that kind of stuff. Like the funny part, you'll hear every single time. Like as soon as the person said they were afraid or whatever, and they go, they come back and they're happy as all pie. They got all these stories to tell. I met this person, this thing happened, and it happens like that every single time. And then what happens if you start, you keep doing it, you get used to that. And then before you know it, like you start living for that. You start living to go out to these things and these experiences and the people you meet and all this kinds of stuff and it becomes kind of a, a new thing the way of life so it's, it's cool yeah so i know you're into like um um a lot of um the the composites like i used to like do um i got exposed to composite when i was watching like aaron nace you know flirn and i was like okay he's doing composite let me try to figure out how to do this composite because he has all these tutorials and stuff so i tried it for a little bit i um um, obviously, it's a lot of work to do it. I guess if you do it often enough, is it doesn't become as, um, as um, too much work. But I started doing it, and then I stopped. Um, so I guess my question to you is like, how much of your business consists of uh, creativity versus uh, getting clients? Because I think a lot of folks feel like you know, once you get like, uh, well, at least I feel this way. So I'm just basically putting everybody into what I feel. <laughs> so uh, I guess. When you um, have a business, running a business, uh, you know, people might feel that a lot of it is like fun, you know, like that's all you do all day, having fun, doing a whole bunch of photo shoots and stuff like that. So I guess my question is to you is like, how much of it is creativity and how much of it is, um, you know, getting clients? Um, uh, they, it kind of goes one in the same. It's kind of an interesting question, I guess. Um, the creativity is what gets the clients, if that makes any sense. It does. Um, um, so it's kind of interesting, man. Um, you know, there's a lot of different styles. There's a lot of different genres. There's a lot of different types of, of avenues of photography and work and all those kinds of things. I've mainly been on the side of advertisement photography and um, composite work for advertisement companies. Um, you know, I, I don't want to like just keep name dropping stuff. I don't like doing that. But uh, I've worked for quite a bit of companies over the years in different stuff, from comic books to movies to to other stuff. 
And um, I don't know I, how I got into it. I still can't fully give you. I guess it was just for me being an artist and illustration and stuff that led to all of that. Um, and I've been doing Photoshop since Photoshop was created. But uh, but yeah. So but, but I mean, besides that, uh, the best thing I can say for any uh, photographer out there, I don't care what your style is. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're a journalistic street photographer. If you're a uh, uh, a fashion photographer if you do portraits i don't care what it is at weddings i don't care whatever it is you do um this is a cold hard fact this is a, this is i can stand by this with with all i got and that is is that if you want if you want more clients if you feel you're not getting more enough clients or whatever i can tell you for a fact it is creativity the the more creativity that you put into your work is what will get you more clients. Even your clients that want the most basic, blandest shit still will hire you based off of the creative work that you do. They're not gonna hire you off the bland stuff. They wanna see the bland stuff and know you can do it, but what draw them to your attention was the creative work. So so creative creativity is everything. So it, you know, there is a, I believe, a standard you have to be at within whatever genre of photography that you're at. But past that standard, it becomes creativity. And once you kind of hit that mark of that standard of, of, of quality of where you need to be at with your work, the rest is just creativity and, and what spin and what twist and whatever you can put on it. That's really where your talent lies. I don't really believe in, that your talent lies in just you just shoot <laughs> being a photographer. You know, I mean, your, your talent comes from your creativity. Um, and that's what people look for, man. And especially, uh, you know, industry wise and people who want to get into whatever an entertainment industry and in forms of photography there is a fashion industry and things of that nature then it really becomes about creativity um i can tell you now man if you want to go work for whoever one of the top fashion agencies and, and all that kind of stuff and you know be booked for some of the high-end stuff they're looking for creativity they're looking for the mark and then they're looking for creativity and they're not hiring and they're hiring a lot of times young people man i see dude they got like 19 year olds and 25 year olds and and all the way up to you know old heads have been doing it for, for for years but you'd be surprised at the rosters that a lot of major agencies and firms have of um creative photographers and so forth and if you look at their work it's all creative as shit it's all stuff that's like whoa i would have never thought of that you know and that's what really makes you want to hire that's what i look for when i hire somebody it's like fuck i couldn't do that or i would have never thought of that you know what i mean that's that's what makes Hollywood and whoever you're trying to be a part of hire you. So creativity is a huge thing. So do you um do you like do like a lot of personal projects to bring out that um, creativity, or do you put that creativity into you know the client that you have in front of you? Because I guess the, the I guess the the question that I'm trying to get at here, or what I'm trying to understand, is that if you have a client in front of you, do you? experiment with something new or do you do like a, a new project um, personal project experiment on that personal project expose that results to the world and then that draws in your clientele like is that the way you approach it or you approach it differently um no i, I so i don't i can't say i necessarily experiment with a client um that's that's kind of treacherous waters right there only reason being is because um, if you're experimenting in something that you are not sure of, or you are sure you can pull off in a sense, <laughs> you can, you can mess up that job and that relationship with that client and, and, you know, mess to get fired in a sense. Um, <laughs> that's not a good look, <laughs> but, um, but do I, I do push clients to be creative and I do try some new things. Uh, usually the, whatever, when it comes to new things. Um, now, I agree with, with trying it yourself and perfecting it before you take it to a client. Um, but as far as it goes with clients, uh, it's, it's weird. It's kind of a double-edged sword. It, it depends. You know, like, let's say you're working for, like, some corporate company that, you know, is hiring you for a job. Uh, they kind of want creativity and they kind of don't. You know, it just all depends. It, it's all the customer's needs. So if you're working for someone... Um, it's, it's really about that client and they're, it's fulfilling their needs. Now, if what your creative, um, 
you know, idea for that project is that, you know, then fulfills the need of the client, then you're good, you know, yeah. um, which a lot of times is how it goes. But it just all depends. You know, some clients come and they're very specific and it's like, nope, I want this. I want just like that. And that's it. You know, mm. so it, it all depends. I just had a client like that, um, a fashion designer. And um, he was like, I want this. And he showed me basically Ralph Lauren. And he was like, I want I want Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger and all my pictures and shit to look like that. And I was like, OK. So, you know, it, it so it, it really depends. Um, but I guess I would say that's just a testament to experience and practice and you know, getting good at your craft. Um, it, it really depends. It really depends. Like that's that's a because uh, I I would say like for instance like music artists for instance when I do a lot of photos for them it's usually highly creative. You know they they usually want all types of crazy stuff. Like I'm shooting right now for uh, Sean Bullard. I'm editing his work I just did. Uh, Mr. Big as they call him. Uh, he's an up and coming uh, hip hop artist. He was just on like this Fifty and some other things. And um, I just shot him naked holding a football that I now have to composite a football field to a plantation and some other stuff because he made a song called Kaepernick. Okay. <laughs> That's featuring my song who has that, that hit right now with um uh, talking about racism and all those kinds of things. And so, you know, so like you never know. And then before that, when Sean comes with really crazy stuff, before that I was doing, uh, he, he made a mixtape called Corporate Dark Vader where <laughs> I had to put him uh in a dark vader mask with a corporate suit on with the arms tore off and then a lightsaber behind like wow. a post-apocalyptic city with rappers heads on the ground <laughs> so it, it, it all you know it, it can get creative man. it just it just all depends wow but, that's that's uh i mean probably have to have another video about how you do like a uh, client acquisition and stuff like that. But I just have two more questions and then we're going to go to what, um, whatever feedback the, the folks have to say in the comments. Or if you guys have questions in the comments, go ahead. I, I, I personally only have two more questions left for, for John. But if you guys feel like I didn't ask enough questions to dive deep into this topic, uh, you please be sure to drop those questions in the comments. Uh, so you don't say we missed something, all right? So the two questions that I have left for you, the first one is um, what advice would you give to um, creators out there who's looking for transitioning from their full-time um, gig, like their nine to five, to you know running their full-time business? Like what, what would be that main advice you would give them? Okay. Um... That's not a that's not an easy one word thing <laughs> or one sentence or even a one paragraph. One word. <laughs> that, that's impossible. <laughs> um, the the best thing I can say is this. I'll, I'll try and answer the three part thing. I'll try to be as quick as I can. Um, the best thing I could say is number one, um, master your craft. That that's first and foremost. Uh, you really need to master whatever it is that you're doing. You know, um, because and the, the biggest reason for that, even more than just being, quote unquote, good, because there's a lot of things with that. But um, the biggest reason is experience, man, because you, your clients, once you start really rolling in this thing, whatever it is, I don't care what it is you're doing. Clients will come to you with all types of crazy stuff or you'll just find yourself in all kinds of situations where you got to know how to shoot. You got to know how to reposition this. You didn't see this coming. Now you need to do this. And whatever else and that that only you're only going to know how to handle that stuff from experience it's just that simple i i've been doing this for a long time i still get hit with shit i'm like fuck i, I hold on <laughs> we need to rearrange some stuff so you know it, it curveball yeah like you get hit with curveballs constantly thank you and um you, you know experience is what's going to see you through so practice 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 get 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 good hold yourself to a standard that that's a that's another big thing especially with photographers that i see um i see a lot of photographers who are, are editing and working but they're not holding themselves to a standard of their genre and, and their type of photography they're doing um to what that needs to be and and um i would definitely say do that because yeah man your, your competition your your industry your clients whatever it is that you're into it has standards there might be variations in those standards but it got some standards 
And if you ain't close to them standards, bro, like, yeah, you can't be mad that you're not getting the type of work that you want, you know? Yeah. So, so all of that. Um, so that's that. Uh, the other part I would say is back to fear, man, and, and the opposite be fearless. Be fearless. Um, you know, uh, there was a study done years ago that was uh, asked um, where they, they asked all these uh, elderly people in different um, retirement homes and stuff. What was the biggest thing, you know, they would say about their life? And, and so, so many of them, almost all they said, majority was re- things they regretted and that they wish they would have did. And just, you know, you don't want to live your life like that. And to, to have the success you want to have in this thing, you've got to be fearless. I've been very fortunate, especially recently, to to be around a lot of New York cats, and I love New Yorkers because they don't give a fuck, <laughs> <laughs> and they will go do, and they be like, "What? You need to you need to get in the club? Hold on." <laughs> and you know, whatever it may be, and uh, and and uh, our marketing director, Big Apple, he's very much like that. App don't give a, mm, <laughs> he will make it happen. Regard, you know, not afraid to call whoever, not afraid to do whatever to make it happen. And that's the that's the you gotta have that hustler's mentality and that hustler spirit, man. If, if you really want to get to whatever top echelon you're trying to get and whatever it is you're trying to do, you gotta have that hustle, man. So I I I, I try and be even more of that than than I already am. So yeah, man. So so yeah, be fearless. Don't be afraid to travel. Don't be afraid to go. Don't be afraid to just say fuck it. You know, dude. T- Think about how many times we're making money in our nine to fives that you could have took one or two paychecks and said, fuck it and be out to wherever you're trying to go to make things happen. Yeah. You know, but we make all these excuses. Like you, you just gotta, you gotta go, you gotta do, just be fearless, man. Don't be afraid. And, and, you know, it's hard. It's not easy. It's not, it's not a simple thing to say and, and achieve, but you know, practice makes perfect. If you, if you practice for someone used to tell me, if you practice little conquering little fears, the big ones become easier. That is an awesome quote. I think fear, um, fear and success, like you know, goes hand in hand. Like, or yeah. I should say, more like excuses, excuses, and, and um, the lack of success goes hand in hand. The more and more you make excuses, the less and less success you have. Um, the more you put away your excuses, the more and more uh, successes you will see. So, I agree. I would and say. Uh, yeah, the last thing I'll say to that third one would be uh, discipline. Oh yeah, yeah, that's another one. Discipline. Um, discipline yourself. Discipline yourself to wake up early in the morning. To to you know whatever it is, hit go for the run, hit the gym, whatever you need to do to start your day and, and get the things rolling. Um, even discipline yourself in editing. That, that's a big one, especially for photographers. Like um, my my friends and just people I know. Period. My girlfriend. Like, like <laughs> they're they're like they're like weirdly dumbfounded, amazed at like how I can sit in front of my computer and go like ten hours straight of just editing and not move. And they're like, how the fuck, dude? I, like, I would fall asleep by now. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's just like it, it's just. You know, you, you got to train and discipline yourself for whatever craft you do, whatever. Everybody's a little bit different. just depends on what you're doing. But you got to you got to discipline and dedicate yourself to what you're doing. And I always say that someone also used to say this to me. If you got to ask yourself if you're doing enough, you ain't doing enough. Yeah, that I completely agree with. I mean, a lot of people see success, but they don't see the hard work, you know. They just want, yeah. just want to just want to achieve the success and forget the hard work. <laughs> you see, I got a music studio behind me. Yeah, and you know, we deal with music artists all day, and we have music artists come in left and right with the all talking all this. They want to be the next big whatever, and they got all this and they all that in a bag of chips. But when it start coming down to it, and you see their work ethic, you see how much they really invest into their craft and all those types of things, and you start getting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is all right, yeah, all right, you full of shit. <laughs> so, so that happens a lot, man. So it's 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 work ethic, man. The the, the cream rises to the top, and if you bust your ass, and you, I I am living proof, man. If you bust your ass, you work your your, your ass off in this. I can't always say you're going to be at the top. I can't always say you're going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, but you will get a piece of it, and that piece is better than mediocre. My dad, funny enough, my dad used to say this to me, and I didn't understand it until I was a lot older. My dad used to say to me. Shoot for the stars, and you might get a sun. Shoot for the moon, and you'll still be on Earth. 
Wow. And I, I used to sit there and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, but as I got older, I realized what it meant. What it means is if, if you shoot for greatness, you won't always get greatness. But if you get a piece of greatness, that's better than mediocrity. Yeah. But if you right. shoot for mediocrity, nine times out of ten, you're going to get less than mediocrity. Wow. It's a lot of gems you're dropping in this uh, live broadcast. I'm going to have to have you watch this like five times just to, to digest all of it. <laughs> so here's my last question, and then, and then we're going to jump into the, the comments from um, the folks here on the live stream. So I guess my last question here is, um, to, cl to close it out here, is like, what is like one of the uh, mistakes or, you know, one or two mistakes that you made uh, in running your business that you would advise a, a new creative who's trying to get into a full time the full time business to basically avoid and run away from ever doing like business related, not necessarily like creative, you know, uh, photography or whatever. What advice would you give them? Um, one, have your books in order. <laughs> <laughs> That's a We're good one. Who who got uh, some somebody got Starnet. taken away recently for that? I think it was uh, DMX. No, I think it was DMX. Yeah, yeah, man, a lot a lot of people should include myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, get get your books in order. Um, I would say before you even uh, f go into the whole starting the LLC Incorporated, all that kind of stuff, man. Make sure you got your books in order. Make sure you know you you got you know your accounting set up. You got all that stuff. If financially you're not in a position necessarily to do all that, but you want, excuse me, want to get started, there, there's tons of other avenues, tons, excuse me, tons of other ways, but do your research, do the things you need to do, do your hustling to find all that stuff and get all that information, set all that stuff up. I remember when I first did all this, I was just doing it, you know, and it was like, oh, I, understand. I know some of the things I need to do and oh, I'll just tackle that stuff when I get to it. And then that stuff came and it was like, oh, and <laughs> it was bad. And um, and then I found out there was all these ways I, you know, technology these days, so many ways to streamline stuff, to have it go from my bank to my accountant, whatever, and just press a button. And I was like, what? Why didn't I? And it was just because I didn't do enough research. You know, I, I just jumped in head first because I've always been doing it. And it was just like, let's just go. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, I seriously regret that. <laughs> so, That's some valuable advice right there. Yeah, get your books in order. That, that'd be first. Um, second, I would say... Um, uh, kind of opposite of that. It's kind of weird, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird balance thing. As much as planning and, and, and um, uh, calculating and planning things that you can possibly do, it, when it comes to business, there is no guaranteed plan. And there is no full set way and plan that everything is going to work. It's impossible, especially in the creative industry. Um, it's just, it, it, it doesn't work. So as, as much as you have to kind of fall back, prepare yourself, all that kind of stuff, there also needs to be a point where you say, fuck it and go. And, and that is very, very important, man. I've, I've seen the opposite. I've seen people plan too much and then they go to execute. And then this is what happens. They, they execute all the stuff they're going to execute, but it doesn't go according to plan. And then they're lost and they're stuck and they have no idea what to do and, uh, and they fall apart. Um, so you got to be able to bend a little bit and you got to be able to kind of roll with the punches and, and say, fuck, because shit is going to come. I don't care how good your plan is. You are going to have stuff happen in your business and happen to you and whatever it is, career. It doesn't have to be business, it's career that you don't see coming, that you just do not see coming. No matter how much you try and plan, Lord knows, we thought we had it all together. We had a solid, tight business plan and experts look over it and people in the industry we knew and. Man, we still had a ton of shit. <laughs> I was like, what do we do? So, so you know, you, you, you got to somewhat also just dive in. And the reason you got to somewhat dive in and, and kind of balance that is because you got to you gotta test the waters and be in the waters to know where the sharks are, you know, yeah. to know where the, the calamities are going to happen. You're not going to do that sitting on the sideline. When you sit on the sideline, you're just dreaming about the calamities and trying to prepare for them. But you don't know what's really going to happen where shit's going to hit the fan or not. And you got to be in it for that to happen. I, I would say the best thing I've learned is, is and I kind of learned from my old heads, especially old old business cats. I know that they've been, you know, what just entrepreneurs got money and invest in different things. 
I see how they 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 work and they, they tread lightly. They they stick their foot in a little, stick it back out. You know, stick a little bit more in, stick it a little back out. And you kind of have to play that game a little bit to to you know have the calamities happen, but not fall completely on you. Yeah. That makes yeah, take a little bit of risk, but you know, don't take all the risk. You know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, you got to take some risk. I just there's there's no way around that. So I, I don't like saying the word a little bit because most if, if you're an, especially if you're an introvert and you're not sure about stuff, that little bit makes it like oh I'm not doing anything. <laughs> it's like you got to stick yourself out there if you want things to happen. You know, mm-hmm. but stuff is going not always going to go according to plan. You're you're going to have bad things sometimes happen. I, I think the best thing to say with that is, um, the last thing I'll say with that is, to me, I don't really, in business, I don't really believe in failure. I don't think there's a thing of, like, my business failed. Um, I don't believe in that, you know. Now, like, let's say you were running a restaurant and the restaurant went under because you didn't make enough money. It's not that your restaurant failed or your business failed, it's just the restaurant didn't make enough money. Didn't mean you failed, you still gained more customers than you had before. Yeah. You still made more money you had before. You just didn't hit whatever mark. Okay, so you learn some lessons from that. You so forth, you go, you open another restaurant, keep going. I don't think you fail until you quit, you know? So as long as you keep hauling, you keep trucking, so forth, even when, when things don't go according to plan, even when things go wrong, man, as long as you don't, as long as you keep your eye on the ball and you keep moving towards it and you don't let life stray you too far off course, you will eventually get to that destination that destination might not be all you want it to be but it will be that destination and i can tell you from experience that uh, you will be proud when you reach that destination yeah. you know it, something to some valuable advice there you don't fail until you quit valuable advice so let's do some rapid fire here um uh, some of the questions that the guys have in, in the chat um so i'm gonna go from the top um so we have uh, behind the focus, um, D. Jackson. He works a nine to five now, and he's asking, um, "Do you think a photographer needs to specialize in a niche or know a little about several different things?" Good question. Um, it's fifty-fifty. That's the best thing I can say. Uh, I, I believe every photographer needs a niche. I, I do believe that. Um, it, it, it will serve you better later on in your career. I definitely will say that. Um, because your your niche is what builds a reputation and reputation to everything in your career, whatever career you're building. Um, but I will say this, um, it is good to know a little bit of all the different tricks and so forth and to have a little bit of repertoire of a little bit of everything because it helps with your experience once again because you will find yourself in positions where it's just like, I don't know what to do. And if y'all, like, what are you going to do with a client? Like, I've been in this position. I, I've been with another photographer. And it was a particular situation that happened. And his answer literally was, I only do portraits, so I don't know. Your client don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned into, all right, move out the way, bro. I got you. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I will say that. Plus, I will say also, um, that also plays a big part, I think, demographic-wise. This is something I don't hear enough photographers, even the, the, the quote unquote, you know, uh, pros or real known cats or whatever. Um, they never talk about if you come, if you live in, you, you live or you're around a small town. You know, you're not near one of the big entertainment cities. You're not near New York. You're not near L.A. You're not near Miami. You're not near Chicago. You're not near Atlanta. You know, I was like, you're in Bumblefuck wherever. Like, what do you do? Where you don't you it, to have a niche is not really helping you because you're not near where that niche can flourish, you know. Um, yeah, you can move, you know, but you know, family, kid situation, depending you want, you might not have that luxury. So in situations like that, I think it's good to to know and do a little bit of everything, to be a little bit of an event photographer and you're doing weddings and stuff here and there, and and to be a little bit of a portrait and a little bit of a you know, whatever, uh, journalists or fashion or whatever, you know, then it is good to have a little bit of everything. You know, I, I live in Philly, you know, I'm close to New York. So, you know, I frequent back in there. I go to LA sometimes I go to, I do a lot of work in Chicago. So, I mean, like, you know, it, you know, it is what it is, but I, I think over time you'll get there as far as your niche. But if, especially if you don't know your niche, it's just do a little bit of everything, man. And you'll eventually find, 
your way, you know? Yeah, I, I, actually, what you just said, I'd never really heard of before, which is, um, you know, somebody's in a little small community that's outside of like, you know, these city areas, <clears throat> um, narrowing your, your scope, narrowing what you do probably won't help you that much if you're in that small of an area, because if you're in a small of an area, uh, some, some client may be looking for somebody that does maybe, you know, something that somebody else may not be offering. And if you say you don't do it, then they probably go somewhere else. So yeah, that's, yeah, and, I never heard and, that and, one before. Yeah. Like it's, I, I've experienced that and I've said, I've been around other photographers that have, that have dealt with that and get yeah, man, Like, you know, everybody's situation is different. So, I mean, if you in a situation where, you know, you to have a niche in, I don't know, you do some unique fashion style, you know, you like, you do the whole, you know, right now we'll pop the teal and orange film look right but yeah but you're you're in a, a area that you know let's say like now it's christmas time and family want christmas portraits and like you could be making money and living off of your craft instead of going to a nine to five that you hate but you won't do it because i want to be this and so but you're not near that like <laughs> like what are you going to do so you know i, I think it, it makes sense sometimes to to bend and to be more flexible i do feel there is an importance of having a niche and having your style it is a thing and it is a big thing. And, and, and later on in your career, it will prove to help you and see you through in a lot of ways because it will build your reputation and people will seek you out just for that, especially if you get damn good at it. But, um, you know, not everyone's in that situation. So if you're not in that situation, like, I, in a sense, I'm not, you know, I find myself doing some stuff I don't normally do. And it's just because, you know, I'm, I'm in a business that has a we do a lot of stuff here. So our clients are coming from a lot of different angles yeah. and, you know, I have to be able to, you know, please that client. So one minute I'm doing composite work, next minute I'm doing portraits, next minute I'm, you know, so I, we, like I just did a thing for a nonprofit where I did their video work, I did their corporate portraits, um, I did their commercials, I did everything, you know, so I, you just never know. Yeah, totally agree. So Stanley, um, I think we already addressed this already, um, but I'll just acknowledge that I'm seeing it here at Stanley. Um, so Stanley is saying, I'm an introvert and have been struggling with that. What are some ways you can learn to sell and find clients? I think we kind of addressed that a little bit already. Um, but Stanley, if you don't think we did, you know, please drop the comments down below and let us know. But I think we kind of addressed that. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll add to that and just say, Stan, as far as like some maybe some things to check out, some books and things to read and things to practice and help. Um, one real good one is uh, uh, her name is Mel Robbins, and uh, she has a a book called the five the five second rule, and um, I found that that's one of many that that's helped me a lot. Uh, the five second rule is, is about motivation and. and how to count backwards from five and just go and move and kind of beat your brain and beat the fear and, and that kind of stuff. Um, other ones I would say maybe uh, like Tim Ferriss, four hour work week. Yeah, uh, that's so a like, good one. Yeah. So uh, there, there's a lot of great books, Tony Roberts, all his stuff. Like, if, you know, like I know some of the motivational guru stuff, like, uh, but like some of that, some of it will help. And if you practice some of that stuff and so forth, it'll help you tremendously to conquer some of your fears and, and conquer the way you think of things and, and the way you're moving with some stuff, it, it, it's not easy, man. Artists, we're, we're naturally introverts because we want to stay in our our little bubbles and create, you know? But at the same time, it's weird because we want that creativity. We want the world to see it, yeah. you know? So it's a weird thing, man. It's just how we are. But, you know, so, I, I say, yeah. um, you know, you just got to push, man. I have to find that happy balance. Yeah. Uh, so Stanley, I think he has a, this is a comment, not a question, but, um, he's saying I've been full, I've been a full time for about two years and I fear having to go back to my nine to five and never had anybody to teach me to sell or be a business person. So I think that's more like a, um, um, a comment than a question. I think, um, that basically acknowledging everything that you said, you know, sticking your head out there, even if you're an introvert. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say to that, I mean, it's kind of a question, I guess. Uh, uh, what do I do, I guess, is what I'm hearing. Um, I, I think everybody hits a point like that um, in starting a business where um, you're kind of lost. Uh, I always say lost, butt naked in the wilderness, meaning that um, 
like it seems to always happen the same for everybody. Where like you first start and things are going well and clients are coming for, from wherever and you're doing a couple jobs. And it's like, yeah, hey, this is it. And then it just dries out and you're like, and you hear crickets and you're like, what do I do? <laughs> um, so, so from there, what I, I, the suggestion I would have is um, one, yes, look at learn marketing. Marketing is, is one of the biggest, biggest things, especially in our social media age we live in. Learn, learn, learn marketing. Um, and one interesting thing you're going to find when you really learn marketing is a lot of marketing is, is shaking hands and kissing babies. And it isn't just throwing shit on the Internet. And, you know, there's a thing of passive marketing and um, responsive marketing. And um, we do a lot of responsive marketing more than we do passive. And I try to keep it that way on purpose because um, passive is what I mean. Passive, you know, you get people here and there and you, you gain some interest. But the direct, you know, is what leads to relationships and so forth. And business is, is built on relationships. So. Yeah, totally agree. Then uh, we have, um, uh, what is it? How do you pronounce this? Thai? Thai 210? Um, I think that's the way you pronounce it. Uh, for someone who has no idea on how to get customers, how do you go about it? And what doors do you knock on? Um, so kind of a couple ways to answer that and the one i would say um in a sense don't knock on doors <laughs> that would be the first one in this day and age and just how people are and how our society is you know whether it's any kind of door to door even if it's just passing out flyers whatever um it, most of it doesn't work um and it's just because of how we are these days it's, it, that's the same as with passive and throwing a bunch of stuff on the internet and hoping people respond like it, it just it doesn't work the way you think it's going to work a lot of times. Um, the best thing I can say I can say to that is once again what I said earlier. Um, and, and you'll hear so many people besides myself if you look up you know Chase Jarvis or you know any of those kinds of people. Uh, Frodo's photo. I don't tell you the same man. Like be a part of your culture. Your culture is you of a photographer. If you're a photographer, your culture is photography. It's a whole culture. It really is. In every town, every city, everybody's got a culture. Everybody's got photographers that know each other, talk shit about each other, and all that other stuff. You got as much as sometimes you might even not like it because they are talking shit about it. Like, you got to be a part of that. that. That's the only way you're going to be in the business and a part of the business. You got to be a part of that stuff. Go to just go out, go to a conventions, go to shootouts, go to fashion events. I don't care. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Let's say you're, you really want to get into fashion photography, which is something I see a lot on your site. Like, dude, go to fashion. Like, I, I, it amazes me how many photographers I meet who want to be fashion photographers, but don't go to fashion events, don't go to runway events, don't go to fashion week. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, it don't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying you want to be a rock artist and you've never been to a rock art a concert. What? I think, like, so I think that's why I, I think that's why I took off the fashion off of my name because I don't like to do any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to, you know. I, I won't say you got to do it forever, but when you're first starting and you got to get out there and you got to meet people and like, dude, I go to fashion. I do a lot of. Fa I'm getting more and more into fashion photography now. And I'm, I'm kind of liking it. So I'm going to a lot more events. You know, I, I would I just did a whole thing with Miss Fashion Week. Now I'm doing some things with Atlantic City Fashion Week. Uh, probably doing some stuff with New York Fashion Week when that comes back around. I'm now working with several different designers. All those designers I met from those fashion shows yeah. and just going up and talking to them. And hey, man, what do you do? Oh, I'm a photographer. Oh, you know, just goes from there. So, you know, like you got to be a part of your community, man. That's, that's the best thing I can tell you. If you're really stuck and you really haven't done that much to put yourself out there, but like throw out a bunch of like Facebook ads and Instagram stuff and showing your pictures and like, why is not anyone biting or whatever? Like, dude, go be a part of your community. Go, go out to events and go to shit and meet people, go to other people's photography studio. Go, just go, go do stuff. Stop. And it will, stop, it will come. Stop being a keyboard marketer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, some keyboard marketing stuff works. Some of it does. But in my opinion, you got to do a little of it all. Do some of that and do some of the other. Yeah. You know, uh, one one advice I'll give with that, because um, it is hard. It's frustrating. 
And so if I can give any advice in that, I will most definitely do so because it is frustrating. One, one thing I'll definitely say with social media, for instance, don't advertise on social media. Like, don't like write like for sale and so forth and like stuff like that. Like, it doesn't really work, you know? Like, I even do it sometimes, but when I do it, it's like half ass or like whatever. Because <laughs> it doesn't really work. Like, I, it's like one in one million I get people that actually respond to that. People respond to social media off of social. It's social media. No one goes on so. No one goes to Facebook to buy shit. No one goes to Instagram to buy shit. If I want to buy shit, I want to go to Amazon. I want to go to Groupon. I want to go to whatever. Yeah. So if you're going to advertise, advertise on the things that are for advertising for stuff for for, for services or for shit for people to buy on social media. It's about social connection. So focus more on narrative. Focus more on telling a story. Focus on telling, like, being a part of stuff that is going to make your audience want to keep watching you. And then what happens is eventually some of your audience that watches you feels interested enough to go, hey, I might want to hire you. So just be, be more social. Like, I get a lot of customers from social media. But it's because they go like 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 you for instance, Ernesto. Like you saw a video of me talking and me being social, and it made you interested to want to be social with me, which then can turn into business. Business is all relationships. You don't build a relationship from selling something to someone. That's the same as if a person came to your street trying to sell you a cocaine. You look at them like they're crazy. What? Get out of here, stranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if that person came up and talked to you and so forth, and then at the end of that conversation, you found you had a lot in common and blah, 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 blah. And somewhere in the midst, he went, hey, man, I'm kind of selling coke cans, and I'm just seeing if you're interested. You might go, you know what? I like you, bro. All right. You know? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's relationship building, man. It's, it's everything. Yeah, I learned, <clears throat> I learned that the hard way. I mean, I pretty much hate, well, hate is a strong word, but I pretty much dislike social media for a very long time and and i think that resonated in the, I did too. <laughs> in the fact that uh you know my social status wasn't that great and i never really pushed certain things so but you know social is all about i guess being social like you're saying and that's what i've been trying to do for the most part trying to interact a little bit more with people on the social media because yeah that's how you're going to build your connection and make real life connections as well so definitely agree so um, Elysium is asking, how did you address pricing uh, when you first started freelancing? I'm guessing started your business, not freelancing per se, but yeah, that was his question, Elysium. Um, so I guess the best way I could answer that is just uh, one thing I'll say is like, I've seen a lot of people over the years and all kinds of people give a lot of advice on this in a lot of different ways. Some of it, I was like, oh, that's crazy. But <laughs> for me, I'll say this, like, like I has, I, I've seen people say, like, you set your mark, you stay to your mark and you never budge from that. And your mark is this and it's high and whatever. I disagree with that. It all depends where you're at, what level you're at, what you've accomplished already, what your reputation's like. So my biggest thing I'll say to that is uh research your market and when i say research your market i don't mean like go online and start looking at what some of the top photographers around the world is doing that's not going to help you look at your area look one easy thing to do look up google the the photography studios in your area that you heard of or know of or pop in or whatever and most of them list some some other prices look at their prices and then look at where you're at, be honest with yourself and honest like where I am professionally at my level of where I'm at as a photographer and then kind of gauge that accordingly, you know, and, and put it like that. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. Like, I don't think it's that deep and you need to make it all crazy the way some people be trying to do. I think it's like it's really an honesty with yourself. You really got to be honest at what level you're at. Like I've seen people charge some outrageous rates. And I look at their work and I'll be like, are you, you should like it's a Walmart. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so, so be honest with yourself. Be honest at the level you're at. You know, if you haven't done a lot, then don't be charging a lot. You know what I mean? You're not there yet. Be real and honest. Your custom, one, your customers are going to respect it more. Two, your customers are going to stick with you longer and so forth. Now you hear the things about all oh, being screwed over by customers, but to me, you're screwed over by customers when you're doing a bunch of free stuff. If you're doing all, like tons of free, 
then and you can be your, you can put yourself in a bad position because what happens is you become the free guy. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes time for the big work, when your customer gets bigger or whatever and they want to do bigger work, they're going to go to the bigger guy, not you, because you're the free guy. So don't do that. But, you know, kind of gauge it realistically engage it kind of where you're at you know like look at your competition look at some of what they're charging and just be honest with yourself where you're at you know and charge accordingly to that and you'll you'll hit the you'll be fine if you do that i feel you know just just be realistic that that's the thing like what i see a lot of is a lot of photography especially photography i see this more in photography than any other trade of creativity where they are not honest with themselves and then like they're like i've done this and this and i'm like dude you in the grand scheme of things you ain't did that much bro <laughs> not to be charging that like you tripping so you know you got you got to be honest with yourself and you got to look at where you're at and then charge that based on that you know like i'll be real like my my, my rates sometimes vary whether it's me trying to look out for somebody whether it's me giving someone a shot sometimes my rate of vary between um, industry person to, to local person. You know what I mean? Like if you look at our website, we have rates. Most of those rates are local and then you'll see our industry rates start going up and then the number kind of disappears because like, we're not going to discuss that as more of a budget thing. And, you know, so, you know, I I just look at different stuff, gauge it and kind of go from there, you know? And, and I would say if you're starting off, like negotiate your prices, I wouldn't like list prices right off the bat. I would really negotiate at first and really kind of see where you're at with stuff and kind of work with people. Cause, cause if you're starting off, you're building, man, you're building just like your client who probably came to you to build. You know what I mean? So work with them, yeah. you know, and, and they'll be with you for a long time if you do that, you know? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so Timothy browser, what's up, Timothy? What's going on? Or Tim, what's going on, Tim? Um, Tim is asking here, you may have question, uh, you, you may have already answered this, but what other tools and apps have helped? Um, I'm not really sure help with what. Um, you mean business or is it mean photography? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, um, so I guess I'll, I, go ahead. I'll answer it business, I guess. Yeah. Um, so tools and things that have helped in business. Um, QuickBooks. That's one. <laughs> that is that is um, QuickBooks is a big one. Um, uh, I would say other things in business that have I, I can't say like programs or anything like that. It's it's mainly been more just books. I would say books and, and people's information and and um, help like that. So uh, I mentioned Tim Ferriss. I mentioned Mel Robbins. Uh, I mentioned a couple more. Chase Jarvis. I like some of the, a lot of the stuff he says. Um, I'm trying to think of a uh, rich dad, poor dad is a good one to read. If you start a business, um, uh, 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 Gary Vanderchuk is one I like. Not everybody likes Gary cause he's, yeah. he can be pretty raw in your face. Nah, I love Gary. But I love that's Gary. my style. Yeah. Like I, he's straight New Yorker, man. Yeah. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk, his new book is, is real dope. Um, which is called uh, is left, left, right jab, I think, or something like that. And left, left, right hook. Right hook. Yeah. 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 And this comes a lot about marketing. Almost the whole book's about like marketing and social media marketing, and, like the trends. And Gary's almost never wrong. <laughs> like the shit he predicts almost always happens. Um, so I, like stuff like that, I, I would look at. Most of these guys are on, on Facebook, man. Like like the information is out there. It really is. Like I mean, Facebook, YouTube, all that. Like go look at these people's tutorials. Go look at you know they're they're just follow them. Follow all the people that are movers and shakers man and, and just listen to what they say and like I, this is always they like if you're doing shit and the shit you doing ain't working try to time to change trying something new <laughs> so you know so like who, if somebody got something new you never heard of or you kind of heard of and never tried like try it do it you know what i mean you, you'd be surprised what may happen so yeah. you know that uh, yeah. I hope that is. No, I definitely did actually did clarify. He says what is business and he clarified also the book is called Jab Jab Right Hook. So if you guys want to go get it, go get that book. I think I have the, the Kindle version or the audio version of that yeah, book. Yeah, really, really good, man. Like yeah, I, I would say start with, with a, a nice line to start with, I would say, that would help the entrepreneur and where to go with some stuff. I would say Mel Robbins, uh five second rule. 
Tim Ferriss, both of both of his books, um, Four Hour Work Week and Tool for Titans. Yeah. Uh, Gary Vanderchuk. That, that's one thing I will I'll say. One thing one of my mentors got me on real big. He's a real estate mogul guy. Was read three books a month. Read three books on how to improve yourself and what you do a month. And that is something I try and stay to no matter what. And and I even changed my mode of of, of just how I operate, you know, instead of getting in the car and listening to music all day, I'll get in the car and turn on an audio book, you know, yeah, I love audio like, books. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for audio books. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the time I got. So like, yeah. So, you know, I, I would say Tim Ferriss, then I would say maybe go to Gary then maybe Tony Roberts. And, you know, if you kind of go with some of that stuff, you know, you'll start catching on and learning a lot of interesting things when it comes to business and, and, and how to, you know, do your thing. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so Marco is saying, take note, people, get out. Um, so I think that was from the uh, earlier conversation. So thank you, um, Marco. And then Photo Me Ike. If you guys don't know, Photo Me Ike is going to be on not next week's show, but the following week's show. And he's also going to be talking about business. So welcome, Photo Me Ike. Uh, so he's saying, great point. And he also went on to say, I'm all about being out there and showing my face. So he was concurring with what you were saying earlier. Um, and then um, Marco is saying, no free, always charge, no such thing as free lunch. <laughs> uh, I'll disagree with that one. I'll disagree a bit. So I yes and a no to that. That's a yes and a no. Um, I think there's a balance with that. Like, uh, there is some free that will help you later. Uh, I can't lie. <laughs> there, there's some free I've done for people that have turned into some big things later. So you, you, you gotta gauge it. You gotta judge it. It's not easy, you know. You don't want to get screwed over. All that kind of stuff. Um, but I have done some free work in the past for people that turned into great opportunities later probably one of the biggest ones is being off uh, shout out to Devin Hampton he's a well, with very well-known director he's working with Kevin Hart right now he's um, working on his new film and um I did the first two videos I did with Devin I did for excuse me I did for free didn't pay me a cent so forth and it was just dude I want to be a part I love what you're doing so forth I was just hungry and turn around man Dev has looked out for me more times than I can count you know what I mean? So it, 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 it's a, you got to gauge that sometimes. It's, it's a weird thing. I agree. You know, you don't want to do anything for free necessarily. And you don't want to be put into that bubble of, oh, you're the amateur free guy. But sometimes you got to show people your hustle before people will invest into you, you know? So I will say, especially if you're looking for a mentor, don't be afraid to do free. So if you see somebody doing work that you want to learn from or whatever, doing something for them, will get you further than just asking. That, that, that's another thing I'll say. Um, we, we're in a very kind of take society. We're in a very like constantly taking, constantly I want. You know what I mean? And I even see it with people who, who are asking me sometimes for work or asking me to, to help them with stuff or even advice. And there's always want. You know, there's always I want, I want, can you tell me, can you, I like to, you know, and never like, hey, man, I'll come and clean your studio just to learn, you know? And especially with interns, and we take a lot of interns in the studio here. We take interns from Art Institute and Temple. And um, the interns I look for is the ones that, that are down to grind and hustle no matter what. And funny story enough, man, you guys can look them up. Uh, one of the best interns I ever had that turned in one of the biggest successes I know, man. Uh, his name's Miyachi. You guys can look him up. King Miyachi is what he goes by a lot of times. Uh, he just signed to Sony Music, and he's doing amazing. Started off as our intern here as, an, as a music engineer. Miyachi would come up to me almost every day doing saying, dude, I will clean your house. I will do whatever. I just want to learn. I just want to grow. I see what y'all doing. Can't, I just want to be a part, man. I just want to be down. And it was always like, all right, kid, all right, I'll let you know when we got time, man. You know? And finally, I was just like, all right, come in, man. And he was the most humblest kid on earth, bust his ass, so forth. And when it came time that he approached us and was like, yo, I really want to be a music artist. I really don't want to be a music engineer. This is what I got going on. And he played it for us, and we were like, okay. And we put everything behind him. And within six months, that kid went from, you know, the typical 2,000 views to 6 million and signed to Sony Music. 
And it, it just goes to show you, like, sometimes humility and sometimes doing some things for free and putting yourself out there, once again, will get you a lot further, man. Yeah. That, um, so I guess the I guess the follow up question to that this is not a question from the um, the viewers, but a follow up question for that is. Um, if you're doing something for free for someone, are you uh, expecting something in return? Or are you just basically doing it because you are, you know, hoping for, you know, the, I guess the long, the long return. Um, and in, in the sense that you're doing that, that, that job or that service for them for free. Um, uh, I guess the best I can say to that is, of course, never expect in a sense, because that's assuming, and as my dad used to always say, assumptions of mother all fuck ups. <laughs> that's true. So don't assume. But um, uh, it, it's, it's a hard thing to say, man. But I, I think it's important to show, especially in this day and age, how serious you are about something. And sometimes the only way you can show that is by doing and putting in that work. You know what I mean? Like, like we, we live in an age of, of talkers, man. We live in an age of people who talk a lot of shit but can't back it up. And at the end of the day, man, the, what's going to see you through is you being able to back it up. Just that simple. So back it up. You know, if, if it means you got to do something that you might necessarily not like doing, might have to do for free to get you into that door, then do it, you know? Do it. Don't be afraid to do it. There's you know, a whole lot more I can say than that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it, it, it's a it's a fine line. I'm not going to lie, because people can't use you, you know. Um, especially the more you get over to like the uh, the LA side of things, <laughs> you'll see that a lot. Um, but it's still a give and take, no matter what. You know, it's like all right, we're using you to to work on whatever project and get you for free. Um, but in return, you're gaining as well because it's, hey, man, I got to work on that project. And I can take that back and say I worked on that project. So you got to learn how to hustle, you know. Hey, I'm, I'm on interview right now. I'll be there in 20 minutes. All right. Put you on point. Um, so. <laughs> where is that coming from? Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, it, it is a give and take, you know. Yeah. So. I to totally understand. Um, let me see here. Um, so Tim is saying, with free, I, I will I will say as long as you are getting paid in other ways, especially in exposure uh, to sort to a source that you know will pay off or a trade off to gain access into a market with someone like Ernesto. I don't know about with me. <laughs> I'm very low. I'm very. I'm very under the radar right now, uh, Tim. But uh, I, I get. I get what you're saying. Uh, it's like you're saying, John. You know, it's a delicate balance, and I think that's what Tim is saying here as well. You know, the delicate balance between free and you know trying to hopefully get something in um, return. You know, either that will be experience. You know, the experience that you probably didn't had before. And now that the fact that you are volunteering your services, you get to gain access to certain resources or certain um, skill sets that you weren't exposed to before. And, you know, you get that in return or you provide your experience, your talents to something or to someone uh, that, you know, you know, hopefully or later on, you know, goes on to do great things and then remembers, hey, you know, John did this thing for me that was you know, at the time I didn't have the funds to pay him, but you know what? I'm gonna hook him up now. You know, um, so yeah. I mean, um, a, a good friend of mine. I <laughs> swear to God, I'm not trying to name. Him. <laughs> um, but I, I'll name drop him, man, because that's my man's, and he busted. He was with us in the trenches for years, man. And he's he's one of the the good friends that made it out and and turning into a big time director and doing his thing. And I'm so proud of him, man. Um, Josh Coates. Uh, look him up too, guys, if you can. Josh Coe, support. Uh, he, he made a movie called But Deliver Us From Evil. And I think he's got another one coming out. I forget the name of it. Um, but uh, um, he used to say this all the time. He used to say, you never, you should be humble and you still should, should do free sometimes. All these kinds of things. Because it only takes one person to have the keys to open all the doors you want open. And you don't know who that person is. 
Yeah, totally agree. Guys, uh, I put all of John's um, contact details and social media details in the description of this video. So if you want to go follow John, you know, you could go over to his Instagram, his Facebook, um, his business page, and you go check it out. Uh, I don't know if, John, you accept visitors to your studio, but, you know, if you're an affiliate and you want to say hi, he's out there. Um, so We do all the time. <laughs> so there you go. He, could, he, he would accept another intern. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we got enough over right now. Uh, so man, John, it was, look, it was, I sincerely appreciate your time. I didn't expect it to go this long. I thought it was going to be done by an hour, but you, you know, you had so much valuable, uh, information. Um, it was very on point. I hope everyone, you know, got something, uh, from, from this, uh, interview. Um, it, I mean, you, you, you spoke on everything in such uh, detailed matter that just shows the level of experience that you have with respect to your business, your craft. Um, so I sincerely appreciate you sticking around and, and doing this interview for us, man. I appreciate uh, it. Nah, thank you, man. Uh, anytime I, I love to help, man, I, I try and do as much as I can, especially for photographers and, and filmmakers and creatives out there. Cause it ain't easy. It, it is not easy, man. Yeah. And I've had plenty of times. I had plenty of times of being stuck, and out there and plenty of times of people helping me and if i can pay that for it most definitely i always will so if ever y'all got questions you need you know more questions whatever you want answers or so forth if i can help most definitely don't be afraid to shoot a comment don't be afraid to message me dm me on any of my stuff you can go i'm john darko chapman for everything for all my regular social media or you or the studio is the same r theory productions r the letter r theory like einstein had a theory so um, you, you can go to either one of us, either one, and I'll probably, you know, I'll get the response. And I have no problem answering any type of question I can possibly answer, man. Because, yeah, it's not easy out here. And I know how it is. And so, and, and not all of us have access to the people to help sometimes. So if I can help any way, yeah. let me know. Yeah, mentors are significantly um, very, very important in, these, in this day and age. Um, so... That's it, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and, you know, put some comments down below and let us know what you think about this interview. Um, like I said, we're going to have another one coming up in two weeks with uh, Photo Me Ike, so stay tuned for that. Um, and to wrap this up, once again, check out the links below in the description. Uh, all of John's information is in there. Uh, so if you want to reach out to him, you can reach out to him. Again, thank you. Uh, share this video with your friends and family. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we not only do uh, these special broadcasts, but we also put out you know uh, photo uh, photo tutorials behind the scenes. Uh, we're gonna have one coming out soon. Um, I saw Wayne in the comments, so I'm sure he's banging away at that right now. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of stuff on this channel. So stay tuned if you and subscribe John, thank you. I'm gonna end the broadcast here. See you guys later on the next one. Bye yeah.